Hey guys, welcome to another video. Cycle day 12 today and I need to get dipping my test. I'm feeling rather tired today. Um, it's already like midday, past midday actually at this point. Um, I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm just, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with the day. I, yeah, because the girls have not been sleeping well, like last night especially. They just took it in turns to wake up and, oh my gosh, just like nightmares and yeah, just not, like they're not sleeping very calmly, very peacefully, you know what I mean? Anyway, that's going across. Um, yeah, I feel like it's, you know, we've lost our balance quite a bit with hubby's schedule being kind of like, you know, these late evenings and night shifts and yeah, like we have him here in the mornings, but honestly, that's more of a like, like we're, we're kind of struggling to you know maintain like a homeschool routine and whatnot because you know they want to play with their dad and i'm trying to like round everyone up and you know it's just yeah <laughs> and then at night they're just not sleeping well because he's not here to put them to bed we we normally do like bedtime routines together i feel like that unsettles them quite a bit so yeah the way it's looking he should be back to his normal schedule first thing on monday so I'm kind of looking forward to Monday quite quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit. Um, but yeah, we need we need a bit more like our usual routines and yeah, it's getting a bit much. Other than that, I am starting I think starting to feel like ovulation is a brewin. Um, I go have cervical mucus. I like this this kind of tenderness. My breasts are also very tender this time around. I don't usually have breast tenderness around ovulation, but uh. Okay, um, so yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like it's coming around the corner. I feel like it. We'll see. Cycle day 12, you know, I, I would, I would say that, oh, technically I ovulate around cycle day 13, but I feel like my cycles are kind of going back to what they usually were around the 14 mark. We'll see. We'll see. The ink is going across on that one. I can see the line starting to pop up, but you know, we'll give it a bit more time. It's only been like two minutes. So maybe not even that. Other than that, uh, comments yesterday. I, okay, so I need to clarify one thing because I definitely got a few comments um, questioning whether my doctor had informed me that HSG is actually a thing and that that's what I should be doing. I, I need to clarify one thing. I am fully aware <laughs> of what I need to do to check my tubes and whatnot. I was not aware that an x-ray was something that they used However, it was something that my doctor decided to do because I specifically requested that I didn't want to do anything like invasive in any way or anything that would require me to need like even one day of downtime. Like I needed to just be able to be in and out and see what we can see with what we can do. So he decided that uh, he wasn't gonna stick only to the ultrasound, he was also going to do an extra kind of to combine to get a bit of an imaging to see if we need something more they did call me this morning but i wasn't able to answer and then when i called back my doctor couldn't speak to me so yes so i'm still waiting to kind of chat with him but um yeah i just wanted to kind of clarify that that i specifically requested i didn't want to do something more at this point like just to do as much as i can basically and this is what I could do. Now, with that being said, this was mainly to check and see any signs of scarring, any signs of uterine scarring, any signs of scar tissue uh, around the area of my C-section, which I know there are other ways to see this more clearly. I simply asked if there is a way to see if there are any signs first before we jump into that. And if there are no signs of it, maybe we can avoid doing extra steps. As far as checking if my tubes are blocked or not, I know again that <laughs> if the best way to go is probably a HSG and all those fun procedures. I know that. I am aware of that. My doctor is aware of that. He has told me multiple times. <laughs> that is not, um, it has nothing because there was a lot of talk of, um, a couple comments were saying maybe he wasn't informing me properly. Maybe I wasn't advocating for myself properly. No, it is literally because I'm advocating in the way that this is what I feel comfortable doing right now. I, I do not like medical procedures. I, I have a bit of an issue when it comes to them. So 
I do things when absolutely necessary. Like when I have no choice, when this is what has to happen, that has to happen. So I'm kind of taking myself step by step to reach the point where I am comfortable doing more. And at all times, I'm considering my girls. Because if I have to be in bed for a whole day, two days, whatnot, because I had to get like a full ultrasounds, full HSG, full like, you know, ink and yeah. <laughs> um, if I have to, for whatever reason, you know, because you don't know, it kind of depends on each person. Like some people will go in out, they're good to go on the same day. I would probably need to be put under for anything like that because I'm, yeah. So that in itself is not easy uh, because I literally have nowhere for, like no one to look after my girls. I can't, I can't really do things that require those extra procedures. So I specifically requested from my doctor that we do what we can with the limited options. So within my limited um, availability, so to speak. I can't, I can't do as much as I may have done, as I have said multiple times, I can't do as much as I may have done if I did not have children at all. Yeah, yeah. So I know, <laughs> um, just for those of you who are worried that I, maybe I'm, I'm like, misinformed or someone isn't telling me what they should or, um, what not. I know. I do. I really do. <laughs> um, and my doctor has tried very, very hard to convince me to do like more things and whatnot. But um, I, this is what I can do right now. And this is what I'm doing. And I'm choosing to believe that if there is something to be seen, uh, any sign, any hint, anything that we might need to do more testing, we will look into that. I'm choosing to trust that if this is meant to be, it will be that it will happen when the time is right. And I'm taking small steps to kind of help that along because if you don't also, you know, move your hands. Uh, there's a Greek saying, sinakinaki hirakimi, in that God will help you and get you so far, but you also have to, um, you know, do things. You have to help yourself along as well um, and actually see what God is offering you and how he is helping you. He's helping you help yourself. You need to move your own hands as well. So, with that being said, let's look at this test. How long has it been? It's been, it's been a bit now, so. Okay, the ink's gone across. Uh, no, that is like, okay. That is looking, I'm kind of missing my mirror right now. I'm definitely missing my mirror because this is like, yeah. This is torture, ever so slightly torture. Um, slightly, nah, more than that. So this is a negative ovulation test, but I have, oh my gosh, it's so frustrating because I have no idea like where my LH is, I have no idea where my estrogen is. Ah, mirror! See, this is the thing with the mirror, is that it's it's addictive in that you, you can see and have a clearer picture of what's going on and you can see the buildup and, and know where you're at. Whilst now with these, it's just like, it's negative, it's still negative. I don't know, I'm trying to understand my body, but I don't want to like overanalyze my own body and I'm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> anyway, I am just, yeah, I'm ever so slightly tired, I, you know, just waking up multiple times, it was kind of, it was kind of weird last night, which I think is the reason I'm tired, it's like, for one thing I've taken to sleeping at 1am because I'm ridiculous and I've been reading a court, the, the books, A Court of Thorns and Roses, I believe it's like a whole series of a court of something something the title yeah I, I'm, I'm hooked officially I ordered the next two books and I'm, I'm stuck on it so a court of thorns and roses I'm going into I think it's a court of mist and fury now I believe I yeah so I, I stay up until one reading because that is that is what I do that is what I've always done I read non-stop <laughs> um, and that's not the, the problem. The problem is then I will fall asleep and the girls would wake me up multiple times and every time they would wake me up when I'm right in the middle of a dream and then as soon as I hit the pillow again, I fall right back into a dream. So I, I'm falling in and out of very deep sleep, I think. I'm not sure at the REM stages and all that fun stuff. It's, yeah, it's very exhausting. Like that specific point in sleep that I keep falling in and out of very exhausting. Someone had explained it to me, they had like this whole, yeah, I need to find that comment. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I think I'm, I'm waking up and falling asleep and like right into like the wrong phase of sleep multiple times all night long. So I woke up just done, done. But anyway, I, oh yes, it is what it is, I guess. Mm. But yes, so I am gonna go and um, get on with the rest of my day. Uh, as I said, it's way past midday at this point. I think it's like 2 p.m. or something. I'm, I'm running late with my tests. I'm just, yeah. It is what it is. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. <laughs>